ACL injury is so common that more than 200,000 Americans receive a ACL reconstruction annually. It's also very common in sports that involves a lot of pivoting and landing actions. Today I'm going to show you the common causes of an ACL tear and one mistake that you need to avoid if you do suspect to have an ACL injury. Before we get into the common causes, first, we need to understand that our ACL rarely tears on its own. It almost always happens in combination with other knee injuries, such as an injury to the meniscus or the medial collateral ligament. There are four ligaments that contribute to the stability of our knee, including our ACL, which prevents our tibia, so our lower leg, from moving forward in relationship to our femur, the upper leg. So if your ACL is injured, you may experience this feeling of the knee giving away. But don't be too alarmed, because we know for a fact that proper rehabilitation can well manage the symptoms that people get after a ACL tear. If you want to learn more about the science behind rehabilitation versus surgery, let me be sure to check out this video. Biomechanically, there are two common causes of an ACL tear. First, sudden change in direction. Second, single leg landing. You may be wondering, I do these movements all the time. How come there's no issues for me? Do I naturally have a very strong knee? The answer is partially true, but the more likely answer is because you're probably doing this movement with a pretty good biomechanic or a more straight uh, lower leg alignment. For ACL injury to happen, typically, your lower leg, the tibia, is jolted outward where your tibia and femur are also clubs towards each other. And while you're in this position, if you suddenly accelerate or you land, what's going to happen is your knee will clubs even more towards each other. And that's going to stretch the ACL and ultimately leading to a ACL tear. Apart from the biomechanics, there are four other contributing factors to a ACL injury. First, while you're on the playing field, you may have been pushed by an opponent. At this moment, you may have lost your balance and lands uh, awkwardly on a single leg. Second, the muscles around the knee, especially the quadriceps and the hamstring muscle, are relatively weak. So when you do go into a poor uh, knee position, your muscles don't really have the strength to pull your knee back into a more neutral position, so a more straight alignment. Third, poor neuromuscular control. Typically, after you land, your knee should be quite stable and straight. But in people with poor neuromuscular control, their knee will wiggle left and right during landing. Lastly, fatigue. When we're fatigued, our muscles will be working inefficiently and we're also going to lose our concentration and that can increase our risk of injury. You may be experiencing some knee pain and you might have asked yourself, do I have an ACL injury? Now I'm going to show you six common presentations after an ACL tear. As the onset of the injury, you might have heard an audible pop, and for the first few minutes, you're going to experience this excruciating pain. After injury, you're able to continue your activity, and when you try to, you have a lack of confidence and feel the sense of the knee giving away. You may develop a lot of swelling and more generalized pain around the knee. And your knee movement may also be restricted. You may also experience more localized pain on the outside of the knee, which can indicate a bone marrow lesion, or on the inside of the knee, which can indicate an injury to the meniscus or the MCL. If you do suspect to have an ACL injury, what should you do next? One common mistake that people with ACL injury commonly makes is that they see their physical therapist or their family doctor one to two days after an injury. At this point in time, you're going to have a lot of swelling and more generalized pain, which can make the physical assessment a lot difficult to perform. So what should you do instead? The current gold standard is to see your treating clinician within one hour after the injury. At this time, you're going to have a lot less swelling and more localized pain, which can make 
It's a physical assessment, a lot easier to do, and it's also going to turn out more accurate. If you have missed the scrolling time frame, your treating clinician may have to wait an extra few days after your swelling and pain have settled before they can do a more uh, proper assessment. If your treating clinician also suspects you to have an ACL tear, then they may send you for an x-ray. If they suspect you to have a combination of injuries, such as an injury to the meniscus or the articular cartilage, then they may send you for an MRI. If you want to learn more about the benefit and risks of the different imaging modalities, then make sure to check out our previous video. In summary, the causes of an ACL injury is multifactorial. It can be due to uh, poor bowel mechanics, muscle strains, neuromuscular control, fatigue, or accidents. But if you do suspect to have an ACL tear, then you need to make sure that you do seek help within the first hour after injury. By doing this, it will allow your treating clinician to do a more proper and accurate uh, physical assessment. In the next few weeks, we'll be releasing more videos on how to rehab after a ACL tear. If you want to learn more, then make sure to smash that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, we will see you next time.